Okay, we are back with Tom and we are continuing to discuss the Blue Ranger Legacy. So we left off at Sky from SPD, so Tom has a totally different take on uh, Sky than I do, so uh, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, um, you said that you think that Sky is racist. Um, well, um, just because he wants to be the Red Ranger and the guy that is the Red Ranger is black, um, but my point of view of it is he is against um, what, what was the Red Ranger's name? Jack. Yeah, he was against him um, being the Red Ranger because um, at the start of the season um, he's a criminal and he ends up leading the Power Rangers. So it's more like the saying that you can be as bad as you want to be and you'll still get on top. That's the kind of message that it seems to be sending down to the young audience. Well, uh, that might be. In, uh, you know, what I found interesting is, you know, from your standpoint, I, uh, watching uh, Batman Beyond, or Batman of the Future, as it's known in other parts of the world, you know, uh, our new Batman, Terry McGinnis, you know, he spent three months in uh, Juvenile Hall. And uh, it has sort of a Batman Beyond effect as well, because uh, that's uh, one of the things we learn about Terry, is he's not a perfect person either. Anyway, should we move on to the next person? Yes, in Mystic Force, our Blue Ranger is once again a girl, uh, Madison, who, who uh, and you, you haven't seen Mystic Force, have you? I haven't, but um, there is one thing that I would like to put to the audience. Who, who do you think is um, better at being a Blue Ranger? the girls or the boys just a fun little game um, I've got nothing that I would really want to um, add um, so should we go on to the next person well from a heterosexual standpoint Madison was a shy wallflower type you in, know. in other words boring <laughs> yep. Land as Bella Swan. I'm sorry, Twilight fans, but yeah. Get over it. I mean, yes, I know the characters. I'm familiar with Twilight mythos because I've sit I through these films with uh, my girlfriend and well you know we'll get to my two cents on Twilight when the time is right. Capiche? Anyways after Masson we have Dax the ADHD monkey boy who was only hired by Andrew Hartford just to piss us off. Let's the Power Rangers fans off, but what do you say, Tom? I have to agree with you because I mean, I've only seen that season once and there's not one redeeming thing that the Blue Ranger seems to do. The only thing that sticks to my mind is the um, Once the Ranger episodes. And that was a Desperate plea by Disney. Please, diehard Power Rangers fans, come back to us. We'll give you whatever you want. We'll post a poll. Whatever Ranger is your favorite, we'll send it back. They gave us Adam. And even though Adam is my favorite Power Ranger because of, 
the cliches around him and sort of the I mean that would be the role I take if I got to be Gokai Red for example and well I think it'd be a lot of fun because I could uh, bust out sort of a Hugh Laurie-esque style to uh, the role And uh, with, uh, you know, if I was chosen to play uh, Gokai Silver, I'd be as energetic as uh, Robin Williams, but this is beside the point, folks. Uh, moving on to Jungle Fury. We've got Theo. And when... Have you seen uh, Jungle Fury, Tom? No, I've not seen that one. Let's just say he's a Bruce Lee wannabe. And when, you know, one thing the Disney seasons did was they had roll calls. And, and you know, for example, uh, Operations Overdrives was always uh, King Kid Overdrive, this ranger, that ranger. But I think Lean Car is wrong. Turbo is not the black sheep. Operation Overdrive is. But we'll see his opinions on uh, Operation Overdrive when the time comes, folks. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Moving on from Theo, we have Flynn. Have you seen RPM yet? No, I've not seen it yet. You're missing out because this is a fantastic season with a fantastic plot. And the only thing I've got to say is... Well... You know, season-wise, it's very well done and... Even though you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. One of the best. Just throwing that out there. Yes, I am in support of one of the Disney seasons. So, deal with it, guys. And after that one, we get the first season of Mighty Morphin, but with Sparkles. Yay, Sparkles! Not. Had to make a 1990s reference, folks, because that was the years it came out. Basically, if you haven't seen the 2010 edition, it made Power Rangers look like Beetleborgs. And it wasn't supposed to be. This is Saban's magnum opus. The show everyone knows. Parents, our parents, the baby boomer generation, our grandparents knew about it. When we were kids, you know, until I think the reason the movie Batman Mask of the Phantasm was a, a box office bomb was actually due to Power Rangers. Sorry to say, I mean, if you haven't seen Mask of the Phantasm, it is... I mean, that is one powerful little thriller right there, and it's a kid's movie. But that's beside the point. Next, we come to Power Rangers Samurai, or as I like to call it, Power Rangers Sucker Punch. Calvin Klein Rangers. Yeah, Calvin Cro Line Rangers, because I swear, all the actors are models. They can't act. They can't do the kanji correctly. It just pisses me off. I mean, I'm sorry. If... The theme song. Yeah, and they didn't even hire Ron Wasserman back. I mean, this guy worked for you for a few years. 
and you hire some guy to write the theme for you, and it's just a ripoff of the original. That's just that's just mean. I'm sorry, but it's mean. It's kind of like plagiarism. <laughs> and what else can I say? <sighs> but oh well. I digress. I digress here. I'm holding my tongue. I couldn't hold my tongue, guys. When we get back, we'll be discussing the David Yost interview. Don't go anywhere.